on Nationwide this evening, we're in Ennis, County Clare, where we discover a magnificent collection of photographs taken by an American photographer some 50 years ago and capturing a very different island. Taking the tour, the lady who brings the yarns of history and local lore to holidaymakers, and we hear that Brian Boru, famous for the Battle of Clontarf, was in fact a Clareman. And you're very welcome to another edition of the program. Today we're coming to you from Ennis in the County Clare. And down here, a collection, a huge collection indeed, of photographs taken some 50 years ago is causing great excitement. They were taken by a visiting American uh, photographer, all 2,800 of them. And naturally they show a very different island to that in which we live today. Now these photographs uh, had lain practically forgotten for 35 years in the vaults of an American museum before being rediscovered by an Irishman. Our own Ryan has the story of this wonderful photographic collection. In the 1990s, journalist Jerry Mullins published a unique collection of photographs taken throughout County Clare in the 1950s by a world-renowned photographer from the United States named Dorothea Lang. Recently, a large crowd gathered at the Clare County Library to meet the son of the famous photographer, a man who had been on the trip with his mother when she took the pictures half a century earlier. Author Jerry Mullins told the gathering that apart from those in his book, many hundreds more pictures of County Clare are stored at the Oakland Museum in California, to which all of Dorothea Lang's body of work was left. Dorothea Lang was born in 1895 uh, she grew up in Hoboken, New Jersey, and uh, in her early life she went off to travel around the world but got as far as San Francisco, where she was robbed and had to spend the rest of her life, God love her, in the Bay Area. She became a professional photographer, first of all, in a portrait studio, and in the early 1930s she started to witness the effects of the Great Depression, and she began photographing on the streets in California, and some of her best-known work uh, occurred during that time, 1932, 1933. She was brought to Ireland by a slender little volume called The Irish Countryman. It was written by an American anthropologist who came to County Clare in the middle, in the middle 1930s. Uh, and he was here for two years and he went home and wrote that book. But my mother had read this book and read it and read it and read it again. And she thought that it would make a wonderfully eloquent uh, photographic essay. Uh, by this time she had worked for Life. At the time Life magazine was the biggest magazine in the world. It's a magazine that had huge circulation all around the world and huge resources at its, at its disposal. It's hard for us to recognize how big it was now because nowadays we have TV, we have so many other magazines. So she, uh, on a trip to New York, dropped in to see the editors. The ways of the Irish countrymen were of not very much interest to them or to their readers or to their advertisers. But my mother was a very persistent and persuasive person and she wouldn't leave their offices until she said yes. And Dorothea came here uh, in 1954, 20 years after Arnsberg first arrived. And she was more or less trying to, to, to follow in his footsteps and photograph rural society in County Clare. The 2,500 images that, that, that she produced were, were uh, based on his uh, anthropological study, but enriched by her own observations. And those observations, now immortalized in these images, are of great interest to all who have even the mildest curiosity about Clare and Ireland's past. The Clare County Library has studied the collection and Dorothea's portrayal of the ordinary Clare people of 50 years ago. She was a great believer in the ordinary person. She wasn't interested in the big house or in, in, in high fashion. She wanted to photograph the ordinary people that she had read about. And she photographed people at fairs, people going to mass, people going to school in their bare feet. She showed them in their natural habitat, in their dress. She describes a man walking along the road as if he just came up out of the landscape. You know, a tremendous uh, attention to detail. Um, we see Fair Day in Ennis Diamond. We see beautiful photographs and landscapes of places like Tulla. Um, photographs of Ireland in the 50s um, are not that readily available, certainly not in, in, in Clare. Um, so this is a huge collection that shows us Clare people as they were a half a century ago 
Um, she had this eye to pick out the ordinary person um, and she could make them almost extraordinary. What my mother always sought uh, in her work was character. And she very strongly felt that black and white photography more clearly and poetically reveals character than color. Color reveals drama, but black and white reveals character. And to my knowledge, she never took a color exposure in her whole life. Dorothea was at the height of her photographic powers at the time. She certainly had um, created much more famous work beforehand, but I think she had matured as an artist and she knew more of what she was looking for at this stage. So you're talking about the greatest photographer ever to have visited Ireland and she was at her most creative point. So naturally she did some of her best work here and naturally we're, we're privileged that she, that she came here. It's, there's some of the, it's one of the greatest photographic archives. She would wait for hours to get the correct light, to get the correct shot, and I suppose that's the beauty of the fact, that's her genius, that she had this ability to compose a photograph and make the ordinary very much the extraordinary. The past lives in the present, and Daniel returns to where his mother photographed a young farmer, Michael Keneally, and meets again this man of Clare. I had to come down myself. This, this is the spot she took me from. Here. She thought you were up, the soul of Ireland. Here now, here he was when your mother used to come. This field here. He just here, right he's standing there now. Yeah. That's where he was. And that, those, that hedge there has grown up since then. Oh, it is, and, and yeah. do, do you know how oh, it's got burned? And we found a new one. I heard, where's the touch? Yeah. Further east in Tulla, and for Bridey Power, time hasn't diminished the memories. I was on my way to school. Uh, we were down the, on the bridge on the way to the Ina School. And she came along and just said, can she take our picture? And we said yes. We were delighted. Who are the other people in the picture? What happened to them afterwards? Margaret Shannon is one, and Mary Hagerty. They both went to America. Margaret lives in New York, and Mary lived in New York until two weeks ago, and she died two weeks ago. There's another picture in the book that has significance for you. Tell us about that. There is. Uh, it's my sister Mary. A lovely girl, beautiful, freckly face, beautiful eyes. Um, took her on her way to school. She wore a pixie that Mother made, and... Um, Dorothy Lang hung that picture on her door every day and when it rained she'd say smiling in the rain. So little did she know that that girl passed away in 1956. What did she die from? Uh, burst appendix. And, and you had not seen, you didn't have that photograph? No. So it wasn't until the book again was Came published? Out, yes. It must have been a bit of a shock, wasn't it? It was, because I knew the book was going to be launched in the library and being curious I went into the bookshop just to take a peep. And the first page I opened was that page. And I had to go out of the shop to compose myself because I got such a shock and go in and buy the book there. She took a photograph of me and my present wife now, Breda Fahey, as she was known at that time. Uh, we were standing chatting in the market street and uh, I was on a bicycle and I just met Breda at the time we were chatting. It's a treasure to a little piece in our household. In fact, it is framed and suitably framed. I think, in actual fact, the greatest need for this collection is that we need to get the collection here back in Clare and then we need to identify. We have identified certain people. Johnny Mullins in his book did a lot of work identifying um, characters in it. But it's absolutely imperative that within the next couple of years um, we go around and get people who were alive at the time to identify the people and the characters. Many more pictures than those published in Jerry Mullen's book are held in the Oakland Museum in California, and the Clare County Library would like to see them brought home. But is there any chance? I'm very optimistic. I'm hoping maybe to go to the museum within the next 12 months. Uh, I've been emailing for the last year and a half, and finally I'm, I'm getting through to them. And Daniel has promised me that he'll give me every assistance, but unfortunately the copyright is not his.
it's the museums. But I, I think we, I think we'd actually um, make a breakthrough. Images. Now, when you're on your holiday, is a quick and simple way of plugging into the points of interest, the history and so on of your holiday area is to take a guided 